What's going on, everybody? I hope you've had a great week. I've had a great week. Hey, by the way, if you're new here, my name's Dave. And in this video, I am going to go ahead and cover our Brick Link store. You see me hesitating a little bit, and that's because I am exploring some really exciting news that I'm not going to jump into. My ceiling's falling down. The world's falling to pieces. What am I going to do? We're going to go ahead and dive into some really cool stuff. Uh, I don't know exactly exciting. I'm excited. It's a next step. It's a new update for the BrickLink store. It's a new adventure for me. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you find this useful. We are going to jump into looking into setting up our Brick Owl store. So that's what this episode's about. I hope that I'm able to provide you with some information that you find helpful when you set up your Brick Owl store. Uh, it is certainly an interesting experience. And uh, let's go ahead and get into things so that we can update our store. Are you excited like I'm excited, folks? We are going to get into creating a Brick Owl store to accompany our BrickLink store. So I always refer to the store as the BrickLink store. Hopefully, this will be an easy and intuitive setup to get us to where we can start selling stuff on Brick Owl as well. Uh, I know there's some tools out there that allow me to synchronize the two different systems. And so that's going to be pretty instrumental because the way that I'm hoping to use this assuming that I'm able to get it set up the way I want, is that I want to be able to continue to do all of my stuff on the BrickLink site and then have the synchronization tool pretty much just take and synchronize the inventories between them, which means Brick Owl will never have pieces entered directly. It'll always be done by synchronizing the BrickLink inventory with Brick Owl. And uh, Brick Owl, when I get purchases we'll obviously then have to go back and reduce the BrickLink inventory. So uh, most of my interfacing, again, I'm planning on being with the BrickLink side of things, and hopefully the Brick Owl will be fairly automated. Um, just to let you know, I've only done a couple things with this, so this is going to be my first time looking at it. Basically what I've done is I have created my account. So I created my login name or whatever the case is, gave it a password, and that got me into it. I clicked around the different interfaces just to kind of understand what it is that users use to shop with or to browse around the site. And it's definitely a different site than BrickLink. has a completely different feel to it. But the part that wasn't intuitive to me is the setting up of the store. So I thought that by creating my account, it would just give me the ability to um, add information to start selling pieces. And it did not. I actually had to do a create store, and so I do want to cover that here. What I did, and I don't remember if it was from the browse tab or the stores tab. You can see I've, I've got another couple over here. But what I did is I scrolled all the way to the bottom, and down here in this region, what we had was a button that said create a store. I clicked on that. It took me to a new page that had me fill in only two pieces of information. First of which was what do you want your store to be called? We've chose Scott's Toys because it's the same as a BrickLink store. I want to keep that kind of synchronized. And second thing it had me do was create or pick a subdomain, which I had as Scott's Toys as well, which means I think if you go to scottstoys.brickowl.com, you will be able to see my store, which as of right now is probably not live because I haven't filled out the rest of the information. So if I go to my store up here, which was a tab that was created afterwards. You can see I've got data on the screen, and I do apologize for the setup. I've got this really weird box uh, up here that's just dead space. This is as large as I could reasonably make the screen, ensure that I was showing you everything. So hopefully you can ignore that. The important part here is that I have no data in this system. This is my first time setting it up. I have not done it. We are running through this. It gives you a step-by-step -step guide. So Step one was the naming of the store and the subdomain. Step two is our store address. So I'm going to click on that. It takes me to my setup here. It says you currently have no addresses. We're going to go ahead and add an address. And so I'm going to go ahead and stop this real quick, enter this address information, and then we will go on to the next step. Okay, so 
The address information is filled out. It was all basic information. It did have a spot for tax ID. And so I did look up in addition what my uh, employer tax ID was uh, so I could get that filled out. Hopefully that will associate all my stuff um, with the IRS. So that's fantastic. The next step, as you can see here, is to create a payment method. Don't know what that means. So let's go ahead and click on it. So select a payment method type to continue. Other payments such as uh, IBAN and Stripe are available once you're, okay. So I'm gonna say that uh, we will use, I would, why wouldn't I accept multiple of these? I, I would assume that I would want uh, Premier, or no, personal accounts. PayPal for personal accounts is a simpler version of the PayPal check. It does not require a business account, but it does have the API integrations. Do not enable both the PayPal methods, only use personal or business version. So I'm gonna actually go back. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select PayPal Premier slash business account because that is the type of PayPal account that I have. My API username. Please hold while I look up my PayPal API. Okay, after doing a little bit more reading, uh, I did have to scroll down a little bit here because apparently this is information that you shouldn't share, can't share, whatever the case might be. Uh, it wanted the API username, API password, and API, uh, I think it was the authentication or credit link or something like that. What you can do is if you hit view credentials on PayPal, it will actually take you to your business PayPal API account so that you can request that information you hit the request button and brings it up tells you what each of the items are simply copy and paste those into here uh, and then uh, we are ready to move on at this point payment method restrictions apply a region to the country list so we're going to go with usa okay so uh, i'm going to assume that uh because I'm only looking to ship nationally at this point, that's what I want to select. We'll see after you select a region, the relevant countries will be selected. You should only restrict it to certain countries uh, if it is necessary. Hold down the control key to select multiples. Well, I'm going to only restrict that to where I'm at. USDs, that makes sense. Minimum order total limit. Use this if you want to limit the PayPal or the payment method to only be available on higher value orders. Don't use a minimum. As of right now, I'm not going to set a, set a minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the submit button. Okay. I have hit submit. I have it enabled. We can see it exists. At some point, apparently, I can add Stripe. I do offer Stripe on my BrickLink account as well. So I am looking forward to doing that. However, the note on the last one made it sound as though you can't actually utilize Stripe payments until you've got at least 10 feedback or 10 transactions. So we're gonna go ahead and wait on that for now. Uh, I, I also don't uh, necessarily care for the Stripe side of things as much. I like that you can use a credit or debit card, which theoretically you can with PayPal as well. But Stripe doesn't appear to have a very good mailing system in terms of being able to print out a label for your packages. I love using PayPal system. And so for right now, um, we're going to keep that. So the recommended payment methods are Stripe and PayPal. Yep, I agree. That is what we use. But for right now, we're just going to go ahead and use it. Oh, a Stripe allows you to accept credit cards directly through BrickOwl with slightly cheaper fees. There's another good perk. It pays to read. Let's keep going. We're going to go ahead and create a shipment method next because that's what it tells us to do. Step four, create a shipping method. So what do we got here? Your shipping methods are used to calculate the shipping cost for the buyer at checkout. Which methods are available to them and the cost will be automatically calculated based on the order weight or price and their shipping country, yada yada. If you set your shipping weight brand, band, you should adjust the bands by 10 to 20 to account for packaging. So we're gonna do a new shipping method, uh, band type. So we're gonna do, um, what should I do? A weight band probably, is that right? I need to explore this a little bit. I think that's how I did it before. I think, I, yeah, so weight band is going to be based off of the weight of the items. I think price band is based on your purchase order. I am going to call this default shipping. 
group enter a group name for this shipping method to group similar methods together and it's not yet implemented but will be used to show the customer the cheapest method in any group so I'm just gonna say uh, first class uh, first class mail is what I use USPS uh, carrier is gonna be just like I said USPS zone type uh, USPS zones we're definitely not using Canadian zones zone shipping enter the three digit start of the zip code you will ship from okay we're gonna start from 483 enter the three digit start of the zip code that's the first time I've ever been asked for that apparently that's enough information to make it relevant uh, yep this is gonna be enabled setting share the shipping method with other stores no not really uh, expedited to indicate it's not an expedited local collection nope we're not doing local pickup in this case going down uh, I'm not gonna get in any restrictions right now uh, if the shipping method has any dimension restrictions oh I could do a max and say that I could only use this for fifty dollars which is the default insurance but again right now I'm not gonna limit uh, if it has any dimension restrictions I'm gonna take care of it volume limit gonna take care of it dimension limit we're good apply a region to the country list well guess what we're going to do USA, to which it applies. USA. Here we go. From zero to four ounces. Uh, we're going to go with, uh, what is it, 3.75, I think, covers that entire weight band. I think it's something pretty close to there. Uh, how do... Apparently, I need to add this across the whole thing. And update. Then we're gonna go four to eight ounces. It's gonna be four fifty. Update. We are then gonna go down here and we're gonna say eight to twelve ounces, which I believe is five dollars. I might have these slightly off, and so uh, I may have to come back in. And correct them the the different zone pricing as well as something that bricklink did not allow you to enter and so this one's pretty new uh, max is 16 ounces even though in reality 15.9 is all you can ship and for that one we're gonna do 550 which should cover us for I'm gonna say 90% of the different areas I believe that in certain areas of California from where I live it may actually be slightly more than that Increase or decrease the prices of all your bands by a per certain percentage. Useful when the prices change each year. Uh, I'm not going to... Oh, I guess I could do... You know, I can go ahead and do up to 32 ounces, although it won't be first class mail anymore. It will still allow me to do a one to two pound package. Typically costs... Uh, is it 750? No, oh, it's only 750 in certain zones. I think I'm gonna to have to do nine for now I think it's less than that again I'm gonna come back and correct these but I need to get something in here to get this started I'm not gonna do anything over two pounds at that point tough potatoes uh, we're gonna go ahead and not adjust the price bands because we don't need to adjust them we just entered them hey your shipping methods set up to ship to more countries than your payment methods allow we have we have shipping methods set up edit your payment methods to apply to more countries otherwise customers will not be able to check out well I'm okay with that because I'm only planning to ship locally here so uh, default shipping and then request a quote that's fine what do we got here shipping method created set up five or six list items for sale in your store from the catalog by importing them or using a third-party synchronization tool so I am going to, I suppose, go to a catalog. Let's see, what can, oh, hey, look at this. Recent bestsellers. Do I have any of these pieces? Uh, these things might be a little bit too specific for me to identify off the top of my head. But maybe what I can do is go to, this is an interesting, oh, I can do it by color. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Let, let's go with parts. We're going we're gonna to go down this part path, see if we can find something, just to see what it looks like when we have it added. Um, 
Okay, so let's go with a brick. We're just going to do something basic. We're going to grab a 2x2 two two brick. And yep, here we have the brick. I can buy it. I don't want to buy it. I can sell. Select a color to add to your store. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say uh, white. Oh man, so many different whites. Let's see, here we go. White. Okay, price. Apparently it has auto-filled out the price. I'm really curious as to how it filled that out and where it's from. But apparently it believes that $0.08 cents is the correct price. I'm fine with that. And uh, it's new. It is for sale. Click here to set the price to the current price history value. Which is exactly what we did. So we're going to go ahead and submit that. No changes detected. Well, that's interesting. Submit. Okay. Apparently we have an item for sale. So let's go back to my store. And submit your store for verification. So let's do that. Verification. What's this going to tell me? Verification. For all new... Oh, I need to submit some kind of an ID. Uh, full name is displayed on the document. Should be your government issued ID. Um, so that is apparently the last step that I have. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, next week, I am hoping that I will have either already looked into some third-party synchronization tool or maybe if I find a couple options, we'll explore those together. So hopefully you enjoyed watching this. Uh, this was a new experience for me. I hope that this helped you kind of walk through and maybe I was able to answer some questions based on pulling in some of my BrickLink knowledge into the Brick Owl interface. Um, but we're going to go ahead and continue down this path until we have a functioning Brick Owl store. So thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate you sharing this time with me. I had a great time sharing it with you. And we will see you in the next episode. Bye.